بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب زدني علما now i will try to explain you that what is the difference between best of the nations and best generation so sheikh has explained this in a very beautiful manner because many times we might not be able to understand that what is the difference between best of the nations and best of the generations the first thing the sheikh mentions uh, in this uh, second verse is that one of the greatest bounties that allah subhanahu wa taala endowed uh, these are the sheikh's words one of the greatest bounties that allah subhanahu wa taala endowed upon the major part of the uh, major part of this ummah is that he created them in the golden period and best generation now he writes from the moment allah subhanahu wa taala has created universe now i would like to bring uh, i would ask all of your attention here from the moment allah subhanahu wa taala created universe allah has sent his most virtuous and beloved prophet during the golden period and best generation that is you know time it was from his grace that he made has from his prophet from now you just look at the narrations and there are plenty of narrations and i hope that many of you might have already heard it imam bukhari rahimahullah mentions this in sahih bukhari uh, said that abu huraira actually narrates from prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said bu istu min qayri quruni bani adam qarnan fa qarnan hatta kuntu min al qarni alladhi kuntu fi aw kama qala an nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said i have been sent as an apostle as a messenger as a prophet in the best of all the generation of adams of them since their creation from the time the adam alayhi salatu wasalam created i was sent in the best of all the generation this this is what prophet sallallahu alaihi wasalam said and the famous hadith which was mentioned by imam bukhari and many other muhaddithin the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasalam said khayrukum qarni summa alladhina yalunahum summa alladhina yaluna the prophet sallam which was actually reported by imam ibrahim ibn husain radiyallahu ta'ala anhu the best people are those living in my generation then those coming after them and then those coming after them in another narration which was mentioned by imam ibn abi shayba rahimahullah in his musannaf the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that the best people are those of my generation then those who come after them and those then those who come after them and then those who come after them this was prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam word and this was this wordings are mentioned by imam ahmad in his musnad imam nabi asim in his sunnah and sheikh albani declared this hadith to be sahih in sulh sahiha the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was once sitting with the companions of the prophet and imam tabrani rahimahullah mentioned this story in mujam al kabir uh, and imam imam tahawi as well sharah mushkil ul asar the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was asked who are the best people of your ummah so prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said people of my generation Then the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked, "Who are the best people after them?" The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam replied, "People of second generation." Then companions asked, "Who are the best people after them?" The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam replied, "People of third generation." Now, when you look at all these narrations, now what what does this actually mean? The first thing that we learn, we'll get to the second part later. The first thing that we learn, it is apparent from all these narrations. that this umma or a major part of this umma has been granted the best of all the generations from the time adam alayhi salatu wasalam was created now the second thing is that many people think that that this often refers to the first three centuries no after the hazrat alani rahimahullah says that this merit belongs to the first three generations of islam not the first three centuries of islam and who were the first three generations the sahaba the tabi'in the taba tabi'in these were the first three generations of islam and why were they special i mean if you see that there was something special about the companions of the prophet tabi'in taba tabi'in i mean they are the golden generations which you can refer as al qurun az zahabiya it was due to their iman you know the tauhid they lived and bred the garner from the prophet himself that the reason allah subhanahu wa taala made them examples of you know uh, how to practice upon islam how to live life that and they were united in the aqida as sheikh saleh al hadid mentions in one of his lectures abd bin hajar al qalani rahimahullah right uh, commented on the, commented on the hadith stating that we come to know from other narrations that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned three generations after his generation you know the first is the generation of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam then then becomes the sahaba then tabi'in then taba tabi'in total four and it according to ibn hajar Now this is the opinion of Ahmed bin Hazm Qalani in Fathul Bari. According to Ibn Hajar, this ended in 220 Hijri. Ahmed bin Hazm Qalani, Rahmatullah, also said, "Yaluna hum." 
the words than those who come after them means the generation who followed them namely the tabi'in then those who come after them refers to the generation who came after the tabi'in imam an nawawi rahimahullah writes in sharh at taim muslim that the correct view is that his generation were the companions the second generation was the tabi'in and the third generation were those who came after them this was the opinion of, uh, this was mentioned by imam nawawi in sharh at taim muslim mulla ali qari now listen to this very carefully mulla ali qari has uh, the commentary on mishkat mirqat al maqati shara mishkat al matabi he mentioned the explanation of imam suyuti and regarding the word qarn imam suyuti rahmahullah mentions and this was uh, imam suyuti the statement of imam suyuti is actually uh, compiled uh, is actually mentioned by imam mulla ali qari rahmahullah in mirqat imam suyuti rahmahullah said the correct view is that his word al qarn does not have a defined duration the word qarn does not have a defined duration the prophet generation namely the companions lasted from the time his mission began until the last of the companions died and who was the last companion who died can anyone guess the name who was the last companion who died topic imam suyuti rahmahullah mentions that the generation you know uh, until the last companion died approximately 120 years and of course he was referring to abu dufail Amr ibn uh, Abu Dufail Dawsi radiyallahu anhu, and he said the generation of the Tabi'in lasted until approximately 170 Hijri, and the generation of those who came after them, Tabi'in, lasted until approximately 220 Hijri. Now listen to this very carefully. Imam Suyuti writes, during this time, you know, after 220 Hijri, during this time, innovations appeared and became widespread. The Muqtazila began to preach their misguided notions. Philosophers began to spread their misguided ideas. The scholars were put to trial and forced to say that the Quran was created. He was actually referring to the Mahna of Imam Abu Hanbal. Mahna was actually Mahna. You can translate the persecution and circumstances changed drastically, and things have only been getting worse until now. This is a confirmation of the words of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Then lying will become widespread because after this hadith, you will find that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that the lying will become widespread. This was the opinion. This was the commentary of Imam Suyuti on the hadith. Sheikh Usaimin Rahmaullah has, you know, a very uh, beneficial commentary on this. Uh, this was he he writes in Majmoo Al Fatawa. Uh, it's it's in the tenth volume. Sheikh Muhammad Ibn Salih Usaimin Rahmaullah said, "The words the best of people indicate that his generation were the best of people. So his companions were better than the disciples who were the supporters of Isa Ali Salatu Salam. Subhanallah, and were better than the seventy leaders who Musa Ali Salatu Salam to." So what does it mean? It means Prophet Adam has his companions. Prophet Nuh had his companions. Prophet Suleiman had his companions. Peace be upon all of them. But the best of the companions were the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when compared to them. Sheikh Hussein further writes: This superiority is in general terms, referring to the generations, not in individual terms. It does not mean that they could not have been anyone among the generations who followed the Tabi'in who was better than the generation of the Tabi'in, or that there could not have been anyone among the generation of the Tabi'in who was more knowledgeable than some of the companions. Now, let us pause here for a while. Now, what is Sheikh Hussein actually trying to say? Which means that this is in general terms. You might have some exceptions. Now, what does it mean by exceptions? You might have some tabi'in who were more knowledgeable than some of the companions, and this was actually the case. When you read the books of Tarajin, for instance, Imam Zahab Bishra Al Manubla, Imam Abu Nuaym, Sheikh Al Auliya, Ibn Jozi, Sifat Al Safwa, Imam Mizzi Tahdib Al Kamal, Fi Asma Al Rijal, you will find many of the tabi'in in which it is mentioned that even companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to say. That uh, pertaining to the verdicts of hers, pertaining to the verdicts of divorce, please refer to the tabi'in. No, no, that's not my topic as of now. But Sheikh Osaimin Rahmola, the third point Sheikh Osaimin Rahmola mentions, as per the verse you are having accompanied the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, no one could attain that other than the companions, and no one could surpass them in that. However, with regard to knowledge and worship, there may be among those who came after the companions some who had greater knowledge and did more acts of worship than some of them. Now, this is the commentary of Sheikh Osaimin Rahmahullah. Now, I would just like to answer a very, you know, uh, simple question here that many people get confused that who are actually Tabi'in, who are the companions. Now, Tabi'in is actually someone. A Tabi is actually someone. After the Hajar mentions in Nubat al Fikr. Tabi is actually the one who met the companion. Now, who is actually a companion? Let's have this, you know, brief definitions. 
who is the sahabi many people say that a companion or a sahabi is the one who actually has seen the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam no even abu jahal has seen prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam abu lahab has seen prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam no sahabi is one who has seen the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the state of faith in the state of iman and has died upon state of iman that person is considered as a sahabi who is the tabi after the hazrat palani rahmahullah mentions in the baat al fikr the tabi is the one who met the companion khadib baghdadi rahmahullah said tabi is the one who met the companion you know who met the sahabi and the same goes with the taba tabi the, the one who met the tabi so this is the definition of sahabi tabi tabi and you will find more definitions in the book of hadith now this is not uh, i think this is not the uh, right time to discuss all those uh, minute details